Welcome to 843 TV, where communities come to speak. I'm your host, Carrie Smoot from the Village Spa. And I'm Michael Burgess with the Technical College of the Low Country. So today we are here in Port Royal in front of the shed, and it is also affiliated with Buford and Port Royal Wedding and Events, um, which is a really interesting kind of place in a beautiful setting. Outstanding, yeah. And Chilly on the water. <laughs> <laughs> and our first guest will be Mr. Joe Lee, he is one of the town councilmen with Port Royal. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have Dawn Pemberton. She is actually with uh, Beaufort Weddings and Events. Telling us all kinds of fun information about the shed. Lots of good stuff about the shed. And then we have Miss Lee Copeland, who is the Public Relations Director with TCL, giving us some information about what's going on right now at TCL. Yeah, good stuff at TCL. They're starting spring registration right now. Yeah. So stay tuned and we will be right back with 843 TV. Where communities come to speak. Welcome to 843 TV, where communities come to speak. I'm your host, Carrie Smoot with the Village Spa. And I'm Michael Burgess with the Technical College of the Low Country. And today we are here in Port Royal with the town councilman, Joe Lee. How are you? I'm great. Welcome to Port Royal. Thanks. Once I figured out where we were, <laughs> the islands are confusing. So we are here at the Shed property. So tell everybody a little bit about this. Yes, we welcome everybody to the Shed. Uh, this is a, an event center, uh, activity center, but its history goes back to a few years ago when it, in the eight, 1980s when it was a storage building for a moving company. And they stored pe people's stuff while they were moving. Uh, but uh, in the late 80s and early 90s, uh, a local gentleman decided to buy it and turn it into a, a theater. It was a performing arts center. Uh, the, rear end of the building that we're in right now was then built and this house is three uh, rooms that are available and then this gentleman uh, and his wife put a lot of time and money and sweat and tears into the facility but he was transferred and so uh, the building sat dormant for several years uh, if you'll recall uh, Habitat for Humanity uh, rented the front part of the building for a long time before they moved to their present facility and used it for the restore. Uh, in 2004 or 5, in the, in the real estate boom, the building of the whole site was bought by a developer out of Washington, D.C. And there the story goes. Is that right? Well, what, what happened when the uh, developer? Well, the picture changed a lot. Uh, at the time, uh, the port was under development, or thought we thought, and so the, the street in front of the shed here goes right into the port property. This is 8th Street, and so it was felt that this would be a prime piece of property relative to the port development. So this developer had a concept of tearing the, all the structure down and building condominiums here. So there was a plan to have this stack of condominiums, and in fact, today, you can see in the back, there are five foundations for condominiums that never did get finished. Oh, is that what uh, that is? That's, <laughs> that's what that is. And then- Those outdoor basketball courts. Yeah. In, in, <laughs> in the front, uh, he built up the sand and tore off. There was a box office building on the front too that got torn off and they built that all up. And uh, then uh, as the story goes, uh, it, uh, he went bankrupt. So the town bought the facility last year in bankruptcy, and we did it uh, as, as a means of attracting people to the town, and as a means of, uh, in lieu of knowing that the port was gonna be developed later, uh, we would have some way to attract people into town, and it's been very, very uh, successful. So how long has the town owned it? We've owned it uh, two years, basically. Okay. okay. Yeah. And we bought it with hospitality tax money, so it's a tourism-related uh, building, and uh, and we think it'll go great. I mean, it'll be real. And, and this this uh, developer came in how long ago? Uh, 2005. 
he, um, he had it resurveyed and, and, uh, and put all the designs together and uh, had the architectural drawings. And uh, then, as I say, just uh, it quit. Just I mean, it, it's, a, it's a product of the, of the economy. So. Sure. Okay. Um, and, it, and for many years, I mean, for several years, the bank tried to sell it and just weren't able, they weren't able to sell it. So the town got a pretty good deal. How big so. is this property? Sorry. That's big. <laughs> that's big. <laughs> that's, that's a big number. Off the <laughs> uh, it's two acres. Really? Yeah, and it and the beauty of it is it faces the port property. The buildings across uh, beside us over here, the buildings there are part of the port property, even though it's the old distribution center for a beer distributor. Uh, but it's part of the port property. So one of these days, this will all look completely different. Now you keep referring to port property, and for those of us who aren't familiar with all of our surroundings, right. quickly kind of touch base on what that port property the, is and what that means. Yeah, the port, uh, state ports authority owns the property that borders Battery Creek all the way up to the bridge where you came over the bridge. And so all that water, all that property along the water is state property. Since 1958, it has not been on the tax rolls. So uh, the state has determined that it's excess property, and so they now want to, they put it on the market to sell it to a private developer. The town has put in a plan to say basically what can be done with the property. So we've already laid out what you can do with it, which is a combination of commercial and marinas and things like that. Right now, <clears throat> the State Ports Authority is undergoing uh, a new appraisal for the property because uh, since the last appraisal, the market's changed. So they're looking at what it might be today in today's market. Okay. Which changes dramatically. <laughs> Joe, what is the property comprised of? The property is comprised of the big building that you see from the street, which I tell people the floor space in that building is equivalent to a basketball court. It can probably, and has seated 200 people for sit down dinner. Uh, there's a back room to that, a storage room, and then we're in the two rooms that are in the back. And uh, one of these rooms was once a karate school and a dance studio. So it's got a cushioned floor, a really high ceiling. Uh, there's a room upstairs that used to be an art studio for students uh, after school art program. So, what we've tried to do is, what we ended up doing is, is turning it over to our redevelopment commission, and they in turn put out an RFQ, and they then uh, accepted bids, and 303 Associates was awarded the contract to, uh, to do the events and the planning for this facility, and that's who we'll talk to next. So that's who facilitates the marketing yes. of it, okay. And that's who you call. There's always tons of information. Thank you for joining us again here, and we'll, we will be right back with more 843 TV. Thank you.